lovelies, my name is Emily and this is my channel Pink for Clarity and today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be doing turkey talk. It does sound like I said turkey talk, but sorry it's my denture. But I actually said churchy talk. Um, so I love my church and I think my pastor is amazing and I just want to share that, what I hear and what I take in and like what I write down and what I get from the message and honestly it doesn't matter what faith you are or what you believe in I think that everyone can get something from this because it's just such a universal message and it doesn't necessarily have to do with like your spiritual beliefs so I don't want people to be scared away because it's like church ah because I used to be like that and you know it's there are bad churches there just are but this church I go to is really great and the pastor is really wonderful and I just feel so great after during and after I go there so I want to share that and have a conversation about it because I have lots of thoughts and feelings and messages when I get it when I listen and hear the message so let's chat so today was the message was blessed to be a blessing um, this is something that I learned way back when I was first learning about Jesus and Christianity, which was when I was in my 20s. So I didn't become, I was, wasn't raised Christian and baptized and all that stuff. Like I didn't have that background. So this is something that I found because I found a church that I trusted and I loved. And I met with a group of women and asked them like, hey, who's this Jesus guy? Like, is he real or is it just a story? Like, is the Bible, like, like just myths and tales or is it, like, historical events? Like, I could ask questions like that that I didn't feel comfortable in other places because I felt like people would judge me and be like, how do you not know who Jesus is? Like, everybody knows. And it was like, yeah, I know who Jesus is, but, like, really, who is he like? I did, how old was he like what did he do like what was his mission like you know just historical events and things like that that I didn't know and so I couldn't like fully until I knew exactly what was going on and like what the Bible was all about and what Jesus is all about I wasn't going to be like yes I'm saved I love Jesus like I, I need the information you know and then once I did I was like oh okay I get this and this makes sense to me so um this is something that I learned way back because, um, especially with um, struggling with codependency, it's really hard for me because um, if you picture yourself as a well or a barrel full of water, to be able to bless others or to be a pleasant human being to others, your barrel needs to be full. And it needs to not only be full, but when you meet with someone, it needs to be able to overflow to others. So because you are blessed and your barrel is full, anything else that comes into it is going to flow out to other people. So the way that's the way I learned it originally is like say you're serving or volunteering, like don't go into a situation where you're going to volunteer expecting for your barrel to be filled because what's going to happen is that empty place inside of you is just going to leak. And that's really where Pastor Dan was talking about that that really clicked with me because um, this society and this culture teaches us to have more, do more, get more. And there's an empty place inside of us. And I felt it. And... I know that a lot of other people have felt it and it's something that I desperately tried to fill with lots of different things. Lots of different things. We're not even going to get into that because that could be like a novel. Um, but nothing ever, it was like almost like my barrel had a sift at the bottom and it was just slowly leaking out anything that I tried to put in it because I wasn't seeing things as gifts and I was seeing it as I'm doing this I'm taking this I'm earning this and it's not everything we have is a gift 
that I have a room with a bed that I can sleep in, that's a gift. And that's the way we need to look at things is that every little thing that we have is a gift from God and it's not something that we need to covet. Um, you know, like just for example, that's just popped in my brain, but when Leanne came over, it wasn't like, no, 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 you can't come into my room because it's mine. And I spend a lot of time on it so I can enjoy it. It's like, no, come into my room, Leanne, sit on my bed, hang out here. Let's be like, let's do a collab in my room because I've spent a lot of time and energy on my room as well, most of my parents have actually, but organizing things and displaying things. And I want to share that with someone. And that's what we need to be doing is it's okay to be blessed. And I think a lot of Christians feel like, oh my gosh, like I can't feel unhappy because I have so many things. And you start to feel guilty about feeling guilty, about feeling guilty, about feeling guilty. You know what I'm saying? So it's just this like vicious cycle. It's okay to be blessed. Like God wants to bless us. In um, 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 11, if you want to like, check it out. I'm just going to sum it up. Um, it says, God will always provide your needs. So always be generous to others. So where you see in your life something lacking, God is going to see your heart and he's going to provide always. Like never fails. You might think he fails, but he doesn't. Like you might be like, well, uh, why did my lights get shut off? Like he didn't provide me with a check. It, he might be blessing you in another way. And th that might be a blessing that leads you down a path that is completely different. I was led to live in a place that I had no friends, knew nobody, and leave a home and room and everything that I loved. I had a boyfriend that I loved. Um, I had tons of friends. I knew everybody in the area and I left it and it was the biggest blessing in my life and I would have never ever expected it in a million years. Um, so what he was talking about today is how again with that leak it seems like we never have enough. Like Christmas for example, we, we just had Christmas and it's like well, I didn't have enough gifts or I didn't get enough for my parents and, or, you know, my next door neighbor got a car for Christmas. Like, why didn't I get a car? You know, what God, why aren't you blessing me this way? Um, it's very easy to look at what we don't have and, um, then aspire to have instead of give. And, it's, it's, oh, I want to reiterate, it's okay to have things. It's okay to work hard to get those things. But what his message was is that once you receive those things, make sure that you're able to then pour out into others. So because I have a nice room and I am able to videotape, then I should make videos that connect with other people. Um, the three things that he talked about using is our time, our talents, and our treasures. So my room is a treasure, and that's what I was talking about with inviting Leanne in. My home is a treasure. So inviting anybody into the house is giving back. And if you have ever given to somebody, out of nowhere, you get absolutely nothing out of it. Like completely anonymously give to someone it is the best feeling ever, right? Like you feel so great. Like when you're able to give a waiter or waitress like a big tip, like 25% or something, you're like, yeah, I just made that person's day. That was freaking awesome. Or you, you let someone out in traffic that you can tell would be waiting there for half an hour. And you're just like, you're welcome. It feels really great. And sometimes as Christians, like that makes us feel bad. Like, oh, I shouldn't feel like satisfied by that because I should be giving like without anything receiving anything it's a give and take the Lord gives to us so that we can give to others and then 
others give to others and God gives to them and they give to us, it's not like a point A to point B type thing. And that's what our culture is meant to be like. We're always at point A and we're always trying to get to point B. When in fact, it's just this big circle that like just keeps going around. And at some point, you have to decide to be happy where you are. And in doing that, you can accept the things around you as gifts and as things that you can share with others. And for instance, this keeps popping in my mind. I remember, I don't know if it was something our church was doing, but we were talking about giving and I, I, the, my church in North Carolina is like really awesome about it. They do like, like we'll take over a gas station and then like everybody that comes through will pay for their gas. And, um, I think they've done Chick-fil-A, like everybody that went through, we paid for everybody's orders. Um, so we would do like just spontaneous giving. And um, that year I put, you know, like 10 and $20 in just a blank envelope. And I went shopping at Walmart and I just was led to whomever. Um, I think one I remember being like a young mother, she had a child and she just looked frantic like I mean it was just too much it was around Christmas and it was just like she just was like frazzled and all I did was I handed her the envelope and I said God bless and I walked away she, nothing she never saw me I never I mean she didn't know what it was so it's not like she could be like thank you for this blank envelope um I got nothing out of it but the feeling it felt great and the Lord blessed me and I had the money to bless someone else and you know we get we, we stuff tens and fives and ones in our in our purse all the time or find them in our our jeans and we're like oh my gosh what a cool thing I needed this and um that's the way it, that's the way it, you can make someone else feel by giving them five dollars out of nowhere it's just like wow this can pay for a couple of the it can pay for the sodas that I'm getting for the kids you know like you never know what blessings you can you can provide um, so life is not about accumul this is like really really what the heart of it is what I was talking about like with point A and point B instead of a circle is that life is not an accumulation of things but the flow through you so it's he was saying it's more of a, we need to be more of a conduit we need to be something that more receives and then flows out because some of us put walls up and we don't want to receive from the Lord and we don't want to get anything I know in my life when I was at my worst point I didn't feel like I deserved anything I was so closed off that I didn't want to receive anything from the Lord. I didn't want to be blessed because I felt selfish and I was I had no self-worth and I just didn't feel like I deserved it. So I wasn't open. The top of my barrel was closed. So all I was doing was leaking and leaking and leaking until there was nothing left. And that's when I was at my rock bottom. Um, but what we really need to be doing is instead of getting all this stuff, you know, just like, accumulating everything getting this job and this position and this car and a better car than this and the perfect lawn we need to be receiving what God is blessing us with and it's great to have a great car a great home a great whatever is important to you but then we need to share that with others and we need to do that by either sharing our time um, which could be taking five minutes say I'm gonna look at my week and on Thursday at five I'm gonna call a friend of mine that I haven't talked to in a really long time and I'm gonna just pour into them and I'm going to save my energy and save my emotional energy so that I can be there for that person and talk to them um, so it can be as easy as that it could be a 30 minute conversation um, it could be time that you take to journal or to sit with God or to, to read the Bible. Um, I think you guys get the point. 
So the next one is talent, and this is the one that I was like really geared into because my whole life, like everybody would always be like, "Oh, what are you good at?" And I would always be like, "Nothing. I'm not good at anything. Like I'm not good at sports. I'm not good. I'm just not good at anything. Like I don't do anything." Um, but lately, uh, a lot of people have been reinforcing that I am talented at crocheting, and that's something that I gave up. And um, my mind kind of just let go of and I've really been starting to try to get back into it because I've heard several people say you're so talented like I wish I could do that and like that really kind of made me feel like I was like what like you can do it like I don't know what you're talking about like I'm not talented I just watch a tutorial and then I do it like but um I think it was a, a lot of times we hear a message from God He's trying to get through to us. Sometimes he can't. But what we have is fellowship. And we have relationships with other people. And they reinforce what God is already trying to put on our heart. So God has given me the talent to do crocheting anything. and But I wasn't receiving it. But through fellowship with other people and them telling me, Wow, you're so talented. This is so great. Like I can't believe you can do this. I could never do this. That really reinforced that message that I need to get my button gear and do this and use a ta this talent that God has given me. Now, for other people, they say, like me, before I knew how to crochet, because Barb taught me in like an afternoon and then I just picked it up, like, I don't know, like two years ago, not even. And um, so I didn't have that before. And I just always was like, I'm not good at anything. So, um,. But you might be really good at listening. You might be really good at talking. You might be really good at um, just sitting with someone or smiling. Or it, I mean, your talents are so varied, and they might not be the conventional, like, oh, I can play football, I can crochet a quilt. You know, like, I mean, it doesn't have to be, like, conventional things. It, you have many talents, and... Um, you know, I like for Jen from General Health, Jennifer H., um, she's so great at doing videos and she's so great with coming up with healthy snacks and things like that. And her sharing those on YouTube is her extending that gift that she has received. So um, it, it may be a fun video to her and an outlet, but it's blessing so many people and I think that's wonderful. So that's just an example. Um, the other thing is treasure, and that's that's more um, of what I was talking about with like, if you have extra twenty dollars, or if you want to tithe to your church, or um, you want to. I mean, even could wrap into your talents because you do sometimes. Like I my I put money into buying the yarn and things like that. So, um, but again like sharing your home and or you know if someone is has just lost their apartment and they need somewhere to stay and you extend an invitation for them to stay at your house that's using your treasure that's so amazing so pretty much to sum this up this what we have right now is all we need I want you to hear that what you have right now is all you need and the rest God has taken care of and everything we have is a gift it's not ours so for me to give someone $20 at Walmart it wasn't mine like for example we do the once of all boxes sometimes I'll find something I just found I had a bracelet and it was way too big for my wrist and I gave it to my mom was so easy to do because it was a gift like it was it came to me and I didn't like it and so I gave it to somebody else and that's the way we should do with all of our possessions because all of our possessions were just given to us as a gift and we're able to then give those to other people much easier that $20 was not mine it was God's he gave me that $20 and so to give it to someone else feels really freaking cool I'm not saying go out and give everybody a hundred dollars and that makes you a good person and that's going to do everything. It's all about what works for you and what makes you happy, content, 
with your life right now. There's nothing wrong with goals and setting goals and trying to reach them and be a better person and have better things as long as it's a flow and not an accumula accumulation. Um, as long as you're thinking about doing whatever you're doing, you're thinking about doing that and also blessing others. How can I bless others by having a better car? You know, like things like that. So um, I just thought the message was so great and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, another verse, if you guys want to check it out, is James 117. Actually, James, the whole, whole James chapter is, I love that chapter. Um, but everything good and perfect comes from God is the message there. Um, and do things as gifts. So if you want to check out that scripture, you can too. So I hope you guys like churchy talk. I don't know if I will be able to be talking this long every time, but this one really struck me because I've been feeling very depressed and very lost ever since I stopped doing my life of chronic pain. And, um, I think it really has to do with the fact that I'm not pouring out into other people and I'm leaking. I'm leaking guys oh my gosh but yeah so I said it and now it's gonna go on the internet I'm leaking but some depends um so I hope you guys have a pain free stress free day and I love you guys so so much and I will talk to you guys soon bye